Hello and welcome to Flashpoint Campaign's Red Storm, the Pied Piper scenario. This is the fourth and, one way or the other, final segment of this uh, playthrough. Um, at this point, it looks like everybody is all in the middle of Hamelin. Uh, the, the West Germans are worn down, and I don't think the Soviets are in a whole lot better position. Um, how it's going to break, I think this is a pretty solid loss for the West Germans, no matter what happens. Uh, the, the question is, is it going to be decisive or not? Uh, in any case, uh, if you've been watching up to now, you know what's going on. I won't go all through it again. And if you haven't been, uh, well, you know, sit back and watch and see what's going on here or maybe even go back and watch uh, the third part or watch the whole thing and see which way uh, how this broke down and see how I managed to uh, uh, take a uh, flawed plan and uh, add in a little faulty execution and uh, end up with uh, with this knife fight in uh, downtown Hamlin so we have at this point hmm, one order to give that's nice that's very nice um this actually stinks but hey let's 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 not be too picky about it i'm going to use artillery um with that one order it's that's probably the most effective place in terms of my ability to kill something um these supporting these guys would be would be marvelous. Uh, but there's not much left there. Uh, well, these guys are in direct support. How did they end up getting switched to direct support? Um, well, perhaps I'll leave them in that mode. Um, Mm, mm, mm. The temptation is strong to try to get somebody moving to go up there, but I don't think it'll work. Uh, and I'd like to leave that thousand point victory hex covered with something, and that's a fairly relatively healthy. In fact, given the state of most of these units, that's an incredibly healthy Panzer Grenadier unit. I'm going to leave him there. Um, He's in direct support of Headquarters 4th Panzer Grenadier, and he is in, over here. Okay. Um, I said, leave it alone. Let's just leave it alone. Let's see what happens. Let's go. 49 minutes of game time resolution. Well, at that pace, there's only a couple more turns to go. Somewhere along the line here, somebody is bound to get enough kills in to break the other side. I just have no idea where that stands right now. For all I know, there's a whole raft of Soviet units off to the east, loggered up and uh, eating the Soviet equipment of MREs, waiting for this to uh, break one way or the other. And as I commented in the last video, the emergency resupply thing uh, has, has turned this into a just a tooth and nail, bloody claw fight. Where if uh, nobody could resupply it here, it would have stalemated by now. People, the Soviets would fall back. I guess I don't know. It's worth playing with. I think uh, in my last Leopard one goes in there and. Look at that. We cleared them up. Anyway, it's worth playing with the, uh, here, here we are, with the turning off limited resupply, although it'll certainly complicate your ability to, uh, to play. Uh, I would hope that it would change this to something else. Huh. 
Well, we've made 12 minutes so far. It's getting simpler. There's just not as many people involved. It's not taking as long to cycle through the combat resolution. Visibility is 5,750 meters. Of course, everybody is in, the, in there. You know, just tooth to tooth right now. They just hammer and tong. Any other? Uh oh, they've had enough. That's voting poorly. Not that there was ever much hope here anyway. Well, that's nice. Oh, well then, we have just... Well, I am amazed. A marginal success. Now, this has improved a lot since the, uh, my, my recollection of the, uh, of the game uh, from a year or so ago. Actually, 15 months. Um, it actually breaks down the victory point hexes that you're going to maintain control of. So there it is flashing. We get to keep that one. The Soviets get to keep that one back there. Uh, they get to keep that one. They get to keep... NATO retains control. That's nice. And we retain control there. We retain control there. They get that one. They get that one. Uh, here, that's nice. This one, they say, guess what? That passes the NATO, and that killing that unit that was right there, bing, bing, that was right, well, I'm going to have to end the game. Knocking that guy off and then having this gigantic stack helped. And you know what? Um... I wasn't entirely wrong about the pile of Soviet units off somewhere doing something. There's a battalion headquarters. There's a company headquarters. Well, no, that's not true. That's a company. Huh. Huh. Well, it looks like the AI has command control problems also, because these guys are milling about smartly, doing nothing of any consequence. Uh, if they had been in the fight, this would be a nasty. Well, how about that? I'm uh, I'm amazed that, uh, that 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 this has actually worked out as a as a marginal success for the for NATO. Um, it's a hard scenario. I like it. I like the variability. I think I mentioned in one of the earlier videos that I played this and seen in the early stages when uh, NATO's units were trying to fall back. The way I planned that battle, I had guys trying to uh, run to new fighting positions. It's not important. Bottom line is they're bumping into Soviet units because the visibility was one hex and You'd have, you'd have, you know, guys running down this road, having running gunfights with with folks that they would see, then not see, and see, then not see. Uh, it was it was a gorgeous thing. It was a beautiful thing. Um, I did more or less the same setup. I think I said this in the first uh, video. More or less the same setup uh, in in a previous fight, and ended up fighting in and around this hex. And holding everything else, uh, which really, that's what's happened here. Uh, I think maybe I managed to seize this back. I think that might have been the only difference. Um, and the fighting wasn't quite so long and drawn out and desperate before it ended right here. In this scenario, this time around, for those of you who may not have been around for the first one, uh, 
I had those two Leopard 1 units that managed to find their way back to town before it was all said and done, stand out here and just stack the Soviets like cordwood and get away. I've never seen that happen before. All that chattering, uh, all this chattering is, is to say uh, I like the fact that that uh, the AI seems to uh, vary its plan slightly. It certainly reacts to uh, what it perceives uh, as, as your, uh, as what's happened to you, where the bridges are blown or where you've got a strong point. Um, the variable weather makes a big difference. Uh, and uh, I guess it's a long, drawn-out way of saying there's good replayability. I want to try this one again, uh, but I, I'm, I'm going to put it on the shelf for a little while. So, uh, one last look. Let's take a look at the uh, Tactical Operations Center. Uh, 33 runners, 35 falling out, 16 down. Whew, that is just terrible. That being said, we've knocked off just about two battalions of tanks, right at two battalions of APCs, and their, most of their associated infantry. Uh, we've killed headquarters left and right. It, that just doesn't seem to hurt the Soviets as much. Uh, maybe it doesn't. When come to think of it, maybe it doesn't hurt anybody. Somebody else becomes a headquarters. I don't know. Uh, but we stacked them up pretty deep. Air defense went down. Nobody had any air units. It didn't matter. Uh, God help me, if, if the Soviets had, in this scenario, had two, two self-propelled artillery units, I don't know how you'd win with NATO. In any case, uh, lots of fun. I've enjoyed it, and uh, I appreciate you watching. Thanks, and uh, keep looking. I've got, uh, keep watching this channel. I have uh, some plans for this game and several others. Uh, there's probably 200 games hiding somewhere on my hard drives. Uh, and as the, uh, the uh, notion strikes me, I'll do some videos. Thanks a lot again, and good night.